Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Valero Community Meeting slash Open Discussion. Today is August 17th, 2021, and per usual, we're going to go through some status updates and then discussion topics. So first up, we have Bridget. Hi, everyone. Uh, so it's just a nice event to say that uh, we finally got Valero 163 released. Um, so huge thanks to everyone that was involved in um, in doing reviews and, and getting that out. Um, so this release um, introduces compatibility for Kubernetes 122, um, specifically removing uh, the use of APIs which have been deprecated and then removed in 122. So if you are running, want to run Valero on Kubernetes 122, you need to use at least this version. Um, yep, yeah, so. That's that part. Um, for the rest of this week, um, I'm going to be spending all the time trying to catch up on PR reviews. Um, backlog is, is still pretty big and we need to like make some progress there. So I'm going to be spending some time on that. Um, also, I owe a feature branch on the Valero repo for Fong to put the plugin versioning work um, in. So that is something now that we've kind of got that release behind us. Um, I'm going to try and uh, catch up on, on all of that stuff as well because I've been putting it off for a while. So I've um, been distracted with the release. So once that's done, I can focus on the other projects. Oh, great. Any uh, questions for Bridget? Any questions on uh, 163? All right. Uh, I saw an announcement go out just before the meeting as well and uh, also tweeted it out so thank you bridget for for cutting that release really appreciate it uh, no problem huge thanks to genting and scott and um uh, sean as well finding lots of issues scott had discovered something right before we were due to like cut the release that was another thing we had to fix so huge thanks sam and sean for uh um providing help there to help us get that issue fixed awesome thank you uh, all right, Dave, um, I think this is both a status and a discussion topic. Yeah, well, I have a demo. It's very short, don't expect much, but it's upload progress monitoring. I'm um, just still plugging away on it and I'm uh, going to start pushing in more of the uh, code reviews because it kind of it, it's a, seems like a small feature, but it gets its fingers into a lot of different stuff. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much free and just, you know, other things like uh, we started looking towards what uh, one eight would look like. Uh, very early discussion on that. <clears throat> Sounds good. Uh, do you want to dive into the demo? Sure, may as well. It is very quiet today, isn't it? <laughs> Let me. Okay. So, um, what this enables us to do at this point. Um, so. I have a uh, the new item snapshotter plugin, and uh, I've done a kind of a hack in the CSI plugin to bring it under this new API. And um, this at this point will always wait two minutes before it says that it's finished with, um, it, with that it's finished uploading into a um, into a backend. So here we are. We've got the backup is running. Uh, it's in progress right now. And as we go through and back everything up, um, let's see if I can just scroll forward a little bit. Oops. So now I went ahead and start and kicked off a second backup just to let it um, be there. Um, and our first backup is still in progress at this point. And now we actually see this one's in progress because in the few seconds between after we checked the last one, it actually moved over to being into the uploading phase. So now we'll see the first backup is in the uploading phase. Second backup is proceeding forward. So it's going ahead and backing up resources and taking snapshots. And while the, the first backup waits for the uploads to complete. And from here on out, it's pretty much waiting for the paint to dry. So if we can scroll forward. And so now the first one is completed. And we can show 
Um, so the other thing that's happening in here is uh, the item snapshots are part of the backup. So they're being shown properly. So this will fix up our issue with like the vSphere plugin right now where the vSphere plugins don't become uh, separate things in the backup. So as we move it to item snapshot, it'll continue to be here and uh, we'll fix up the, uh, the display. And then here's the, uh, the second uh, backup is continuing at this point. So it's in the uploading phase and eventually it completes as well. And it has its own set of snapshots. So that's it for demo day today. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> I know, awesome, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 like, because I was, I was giving a demo to the, the folks. Um, I was uh, doing a, a deep dive on the AWS plugin for the new uh, team members in Beijing. Um, and that was one of the things that had come up was the discussion around this because we were looking at EBS snapshots and how the Valero backup says, yep, I'm done. But you go to the AWS console and you see the snapshots are still being created. So um, this is one of the things that I pointed out that we would be able to um, create an item snapshot or plugin essentially under the AWS one, which would be able to show that progress. So this is exciting to see it uh, move forward. So thanks for the demo. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so that'll, that'll clean up some of that stuff. And then that poises us towards uh, moving towards the Astrolabe APIs internally and also getting the data movement stuff pulled up into Valero so that we can move things out of um, snapshots. Yeah. So, the, so the, that issue that was just mentioned with the snapshots, um, not, you know, eight of us have snapshots saying it's done, but it's not really done yet. Um, that, I know that was an issue, came up in discussion. Of, at least a year or so ago now, I know we ended up putting something in place in our fork on the conveyor side and then, but there were some issues with the way it was implemented. So you guys didn't, didn't like it that way. And it sounds like that may not be needed anymore once this is kind of finally worked out. That would be the goal. So if there's yep. anything different that you need in here, um, you know, yep. kick it in. Um, I'll put the item snapshot or APIs and code in uh, today or tomorrow for review. Um, so I'm going to also roll in the uh, the context into the item snapshotter so that we can push timeouts down. Um, and I guess for the versioning, I should put these under a V1 directory, and then we'll be in the proper place for versioning as we move forward. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then um, may not make 1.7. There's, there's going to be a lot of reviews and just a lot of cleanup to get this done, but it'll be in, if it doesn't hit 1.7, it'll be in early of 1.8. And then we've got to go through and start um, converting plugins over. So the existing plugins continue to work, but my goal is to get all as all of our existing plugins moved under this item snapshotter as soon as we can. Um, and then we can get rid of these issues like AWS, vSphere, I'm sure there's other places. Open EBS probably has this problem. Yeah, I, I know when I ran into this, it was definitely an issue for AWS and vSphere and I think GCP as well. Those are the three plugins we work with. And I ended up putting an, an R fork similar code in place to sort of wait for that to be done, but it was on the backup side. And so this, this, is, this is a cleaner approach. Once that's in place, we should be able to basically abandon our local commits there to do that, it sounds like. Yeah, that'll be cool. And then we can get this all unified together. And um, eventually we'll have, so right now the, the uploading is, is strictly internal to the plugins, but there's no reason why it has to be. So as we move forward with like putting data movement into Valero, um, then you know it's pretty much the same thing. We took a snapshot, the snapshot uploading is in progress. You know, it may be because the plugin's doing it, maybe because Valero is controlling it, whatever it is, that can all happen after the, um, the backup proper has finished and we can move on to take it to another one. Um, I'm considering, um, if we should get some limits on the number of backups that we can have outstanding. Any, um, any thoughts on that? I'm, I'm worried I'm going to wind up with like 30 backups on the uploading phase. Yeah, I've always wondered about that because we do um, with this, like, for example, the schedules, like if you create them such that um, there's, they happen more frequently, um, 
well, the time between each backup being triggered is is less than the amount of time it takes to do a backup. You can easily end up with like a backlog that continues to grow that Valero like won't be able to catch up with. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's uh, something we should consider here. Um, it's kind of hard to say because something like EBS, um, you know, you've got a huge amount of infrastructure behind EBS. So even if you're running ahead of EBS, it'll catch up sooner or later and it pretty much guarantees things. Uh, the vSphere plugin, you know, that each, each additional upload is taking system resources in the background and it's eating out of a finite pool. And uh, you also run into issues like uh, the total number, like we don't put a hard limit, but the more vSphere snapshots we have outstanding, uh, it slows things down. And also uh, the longer a snapshot is outstanding, the longer it takes to consolidate and merge it down when you delete it because all of the changes that happened after that snapshot have to get merged into the base underneath of it. So I don't know, it's, it's some, some of it is like, don't do that as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of wondering, like it might, it might need some consideration to make sure that like if you if you start to build up like a backlog of of backups to be processed and you introduce a new one like should new ones take priority over ones which are currently in the queue or uh, which we don't have any process yeah i mean we don't have any it really depends on this on the back end so mm -hmm. like in ebs we have zero control yeah you know we told ebs take a snapshot it says okay i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do and yeah there's not a lot of room there. So, and we, and that's our current situation anyway. We simply yeah. don't track it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good fun. Sooner or later, we're going to be an enterprise backup. <laughs> we'll just <laughs> gradually ease our way towards it because you got to do a bunch of these things. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you, Dave. Um, does anyone have anything they want to discuss today? Anything they want to bring up? All right. Uh, then I'm going to dive into some contributor shout outs. Let's see here. All right. So we have three of these. The first one is from uh, Tiger Kauvilai. Uh, software engineer at OpenShift uh, who updated the IBM config.md. So some documentation changes there, making sure that we properly handle IBM storage. Super nice. Thank you for that. Uh, then someone else maybe can talk about this one from uh, Lars Litonen. Yeah, I can uh, chat about this. Um, so Lars has actually gone through and made quite a few of these changes where there were a few um, like situations in Valero where we weren't checking the errors that were being returned from various function calls. Um, one of these actually um, helped us uncover um, an issue with um, using one of the deprecated APIs. So I think if that hadn't been introduced, um, it allowed us to, to find another bug with them um, uh, checking for CRD readiness whenever we're installing Valero. So um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lars, for uh, helping us catch those issues. Nice. Thank you. Uh, next up, Rustic Backup. Um, yeah, so this one, um, I didn't review, review it, but um, when Rustic, um, when we're performing Rustic Backups, if the pod has been um, is like completed or stopped or it's, it's just currently not in a running state, um, RESIC or our RESIC backup would continue to try and um, back up those volumes um, and that would cause like an error because um, the volume wasn't uh, accessible. Um, so I think this check or sorry, this change um, introduces a check to make sure that the, the pod is actually running um, before proceeding with the backup. So that should fix that error. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, Marcel. Thank you, Marcel. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so with that, thank you everyone for joining. 
have a fantastic rest of the week. Oh, um, one small thing. Uh, so next week uh, we're we're doing a um, a community engagement health check for Valero. So I'll present uh, some of those results on the community meeting next week as well. Yeah, yeah before they, we go, um, turnout seems extremely small. I mean, even for normal here. So did something go? Something happen with the invite or something? Should be fine, but I'll I'll double check for sure. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah. Y'all know using shows, so um, I'll ping her and see what what happened. <laughs> I think she she um sent a message saying that she had another meeting that she had to attend and had to skip this one, unfortunately. But yes, she did know about it. So okay. it's also vacation time for a lot of people. Yeah, That's that right. sounds good. Speaking of which, I'll be out on vacation next week. So see you in two oh, weeks. Nice, nice. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> I can take my son to college. Awesome. Thank well, you. with that. Have a fantastic rest of the week, folks. Talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.